Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Fight Bros Combat Sports NZ Radio. You're with me, JB. Up here you have Anuru. And up here you got Lucas. What's up? How's it? How's it? Hey, how's it? Lucas uh, has a lot of memorabilia, as everyone can see. G yeah, give us a little once off. around, a little once around of your of your pad. Fuck, it's so uh, I've got my signed 160 poster, the uh, Metallica pinball. <laughs> yeah. Pantera, Pantera. Okay. Name. It's a signed Metallica guitar up there. <laughs> <coughs> Oh man, this shit's Hot awesome. Table. Oh. <laughs> bah. Um, yeah. That's awesome, man. So yeah, thanks for joining us, everyone. That's it. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna we have to go down to this cunt's house one day eh, and watch the fucking UFC for sure. UFC three hundred. Three hundred. Two hundred two. Two oh two. Oh yeah, two oh two. Watch that Irish guy get his ass kicked again. Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, I still can do it. Wait, well, you know, absolutely he could. You know, there was very, very few believers in the last fight, including myself. I didn't rate Nate Diaz with much of a chance, coming off such a short, um, you know, non-existent camp, as it were. But yeah. That's uh, not exactly what we were going to talk about, but um, we might come back to that later on. Today we're going to talk like about that. a few things. We got um, first up on the agenda is a bit of a rundown of today's main event and co-main event, and maybe a couple of other interesting fights from UFC Fight Night Chicago. So yeah, there was a, another women's women's card, another women's main event, and it had another women's fight on there as well. So another strong show for the girls. Yeah, another good fight from the ladies, hey, eh? I really, really enjoyed that fight, man, and it was all stand-up, yep. and we knew, we sort of knew it was going to be, with uh, those two girls, as stand-up as their game. Yeah, yeah, and just bang, it was great. I don't, I don't think you enjoyed it, JB, is that true? Uh, I, <laughs> I thought it was um, a bit predictable, and I, I'm just a big Holly fan, so I was hoping that she would have done better in the fight. No, I was a bit distracted during the fights. So they had kids just destroying the house around me. So <laughs> <laughs> when I wasn't controlling the piece, I'd have a glance at the TV and sort of what I saw was just Shavenko, am I saying it right? Who um who just countering Holly. Yeah, she was working her eh? She had her worked out so good, like the plan they had going in was just great. Yeah, yeah I was a Oh, it's going to be too big. And she was noticeably, she looked a weight class bigger, didn't she? Yeah, and she looks ripped as well. She looks like bigger and shredded. Yeah, she was massive, uh, but Spinko, what's her name? Shiv Shivchenko. Shivchenko. Yeah. Way too quick, man. Yeah. Better game plan. And there's two in a row for Holly. Yeah, that's Check. right. Yeah. So yeah, two. So from like zero to zero, real quick. So who gets the next shot? Well, Do you give it to her. Run back. There you go. Uh, Venezuela Vixen versus Valentina, bro. And then the winner. I don't think they'd want to keep the champ on the shelf. They sort of got a pattern of. Um, when there's a new champion, they like to get them straight back in as soon mm. as possible, especially if they're not a big name. Yeah. Well, you know, also, you know, because a lot of people think that uh, the UFC is on a bit of a crusade to have mainly American champions, um, you know, potentially they'd want to put pressure on a non-American champion immediately if they can. That is true. <laughs> but yeah, it's another um, another good woman's fight on the card was Felice Herrig, who looked like man, she looked she looked so shredded um, at the weigh-in against uh, Hawaiian Kylan Curran, and it was, yeah, it's a quick fight. 
Yeah, quick fight. Um, she looked nasty from from the start, man. She was kicking and punching like she was so sharp and fast of Felice, and she didn't give, really give Kylan any any chance, man. And yeah. she's coming so coming off that year to prepare. She looked like she really wanted to be there, right? Yeah, she looked great. She, um, you know, a bit of a polarizing figure again, Felice Herrig, with um, you know, a lot of her social media activity and stuff, and how she was in, or how she was portrayed at least in the um, Ultimate Fighter House. Who did you have? Who were you picking going into that fight? The prettiest one. <laughs> <laughs> I am. Um, <laughs> I know Felice Herrig has, has like always okay. had a bit of a strong Muay Thai um, background and um, coming off a, um, I think she was coming off a loss as well, was she? But yeah, coming off a big layoff, I, I tend to back people who are who are real good when they're coming off a big layoff because they want to try and prove themselves, things like that. Yeah, she, yeah she was coming off a loss to Paige. Oh, yep. Felice was, and yep. I think Kaylin had just won one, but she she had also lost to uh, Paige as well. Yeah, old Paige. Do you know when her next fight is? Yeah, uh, uh, coming up Rowdy soon, Beck. isn't it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, Rowdy Beck, rolling. That'd be an interesting fight. Hmm. Are we yeah. handling that? It? She she used to I used to really dig Rowdy Beck and I still sort of do but man she's got so many haters online it's it's outrageous yeah that's right I find the women attract a lot well you know everyone attracts a lot of hate but you know a lot of haters will jump on on the female fighters um, extra compared to, like you know if you compare um, the sort of hate that Cyborg has had for most of her career, and you compare that to any of the male cheaters who cheat one day and then they're forgiven the next day. Um, you know, people don't bring up that Vitor is a cheater every single time you talk about him. Like, people are real quick to forget things like that. But you talk about Cyborg, Cyborg and they're like, oh, that man that cheated. And it's like, what, four years ago? But yeah, it's like uh, the woman definitely. Yeah, 2012. Fuck, time flies. In a now defunct there, there's um, no film. way Cyborg makes 135. Yeah, you saw I her live, eh? Next to her in Vegas, and my god, I don't know how she makes 145, 140, yeah. 135. Yeah, she's a beast. <laughs> nah, she looked fucking on the limit, bro. What'd she do? That catch weight, 140? She's 40. on the limit. Yeah. Fuck. We're up. Even when she cuts to 145, you know, previously an Invicta, a Strike Force, etc., man, she she looks like that is a massive challenge for her as well. She's asking for her own division, yeah. That's what I saw today, I think. Well, there, there's definitely enough talent. <clears throat> like, 145 would kind of be like, what, women's light heavyweight? Or heavyweight? Yeah, heavyweight. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'd, she, I'd love to see it. She's a big enough star now to to carry a division. As well, they, as she they can can't, make her big enough. Right, there's, there's not much... I don't think there's much depth in that division yet. But yeah, that's right. When she walked in to the, to the, where the fighters sit, the line for people trying to get her signature was bigger than anyone else. There was... Wow. Eljamain Sterling walked in, hardly anyone recognised him, he walked straight <laughs> past, um, Matt Hughes come in, Nice. you know, he's a pretty big name, Cyborg's line was massive, Wow. everyone was, she's, yeah, I was very surprised, she's becoming very popular. That's great, that's great, like I've been a fan of Cyborg for a long time, and yeah, that, that, that'd that be great to see the UFC back her. Because, like you say, she definitely has the star power and they, they absolutely have the marketing and the money. So, you know, they could make a huge, they could make that division huge if they wanted to. And it'd be a good one for a lot of female fighters that you see struggling to hit 135 and perform well. That's true. I'd, I'd love to see an all-female card and 
you know, you, pr you probably need at least another division to, to fill it out and make it incredibly watchable. No. Oh, I'm not sure about that one just yet. <laughs> like an all women's card? Yeah, it'd be a lot of just a lot of decisions. Yeah, potentially, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, all those lighter divisions. Cool, so right, what, what else are they fucking out? Your old French mate there, the big fella. Oh yeah. <laughs> In Ganu. <laughs> He's, uh, um, he looks good getting off the bus, anyway. <laughs> yeah, you have to cut to get to, what is that, 245? 265. Uh, two, it was um, 259, so oh, not okay. quite. Yeah, he's a no, unit, man. Oh, don't think he beats top 10. Not yet, but then if he connects with anyone solid like you know he like arm punched him and yep. yeah he looked great I'd look, him and Derek Lewis that'd be good just yeah. all yeah. of that um, meat just colliding would be intense I think you put a funny post up was it you Anadu you're like his next fight's gonna be against Usada oh yeah it's hard <laughs> it's hard to I, I'm, I'm sort of, um, everyone's fucking on the use analyst for me at the moment. Um, he, him, fucking Barboza looked like he'd been on uh, Anderson's dick pills. <laughs> fucking Holly Holm, Holly Holmes traps and shoulders, and I um, pray to God that she's not, man. It's, man, if she's, she's, she everyone. looks like she's a genetic freak if she isn't, you know, it's like, Gotta have some faith in people, guys. Well, I had, to, I had some man. faith I'm in Brock, faith and look at that. <laughs> Holly Holm is the most tested athlete on the USADA list over the last two years. 14 times? Shit. Brock passed fucking five tests, And then bro. failed two? Come on. What does that say? Yeah. IQ yeah, test? Exactly. the IQ test? <laughs> yeah. How did they? Yeah, and it's all about you know looking now. Fuck, you can see it. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, and like, how did they? How did Bones get through so many tests without being caught, and then suddenly he gets picked up when he's like deep into the post cycle, like you know the post steroids steroid cycle. It's like where are all these tests along the way? Painted supplements, man. <laughs> <laughs> like baby formula. You yeah. know they're gonna. You know they're going to find a painted supplement and say, oh, this is the one I was taking. Yeah. They're probably going to test a hundred supplements, find one that is painted, yeah. and say that's the one he was taking. And that guy, Malky Kawi, uh, John Jones's manager, he seems, I don't know, he seems a little shady. He represents <laughs> a couple of drug cheats here and there. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> Probably rich as shit. Yeah. Yeah, you got yell off for tainted supplements. Yeah. Oh, hey, fuck. It sounds like they actually uncovered a whole range of products that were actually tainted off that reading into it. Well, that's, that's... They said this is the supplements they take. They tested it and then they went to the actual factory and tested random ones off the shelves and they were all actually tainted, so wow. I don't know what you to take from that, but it's pretty good oh. if they did uncover like a huge issue, you know, because potentially other people are getting busted that didn't have the money to go then go and do all of this additional testing and and you know put the um, manufacturers on blast like Bones's crew and you know uh, Kawi and Yoel Romero etc. But um yeah. You got fucking Frank Mir said he he can't afford to test his B sample. Wow, his, those are his words. He <laughs> couldn't afford to fucking fight the thing yeah. and find the kangaroo meat or wherever it came from. <laughs> uh, now, what, um, now, what was his words? The risk, 
what it would cost was going to cost him. He just didn't think it was risk versus reward. Was wasn't worth it. Well, even he, well, he fucking pleaded he was innocent. You know, you wouldn't. You'd think. You'd think that's a great risk to fucking. Yeah, reward. yeah. It's the biggest fucking one there is. Yeah, yeah, that's he right. Thinks he's innocent. If you knew you were innocent, I don't know you. You would just do it, wouldn't you? Just for pride. Yeah. Probably he obviously does. thinks there's a chance that it might come back fucking the same. I don't know. Yeah, but, you know, Frank Mir looks like someone who's yo-yoed for, like, the last five years, on and off. You know, he's gone thin, fat, like, hard body, thin, hard body, fat. You know, he's had the roid gut, he's had no gut. He just, um, I don't know. I wouldn't put it past him to, to have tried things, especially once you start getting on a slide and you're used to being at the top of the game. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Potentially, you know, like, it, I don't know, for some guys it probably wouldn't take a whole lot of convincing to, to try and lift their game using means that weren't weren't wholly legal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's... it's especially for him, man, he was... He was the champ, it got taken away. That's right. He was eh? again. Yeah, you that's know. right. You know, it's it's it, it sounds him, like really. an easy sell to for him to be like, Man, this could be this could be old Frank back, you know. But you know, he, he obviously never quite got there. Had some great fights and wins along the way though. Yeah, man, no, he's 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 great. But the kangaroo meet in the end, you know, is what some people will remember, but a lot of people forget. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, power to him if he um if he makes a good recovery and, and comes back strong, then definitely power to him. Like I was a huge Frank Mir fan, especially when he first arrived, and you know he was he was like a young, annoying kickboxer and stuff, and he always had the attitude and the hair and shit. <laughs> Yeah, Lucas is back. <laughs> Lucas is back, everybody. But maybe we should um, cut to something that we were going to do towards the end. But have you got any awesome or you know just just funny Vegas stories, like uh, a farmer in Las Vegas? Ah, <laughs> uh, a few of you may have seen the video. The um, oh no, oh, backstory first. Um, our second-born son, we called him uh, Chael McIver. And um, after the famous Chow P. Sonnen, of course, <laughs> uh, in Vegas this time, we we're um, what have we just been to? Been to a weigh in or an open workout or something. We we're walking out of the MGM, and uh, Chow was there filming for ESPN, just a little segment there. And um, Scott had a chat to him, mentioned. Uh, boy's name and he's a bit taken back by that um, and um, signed a few things took photos blah, blah, blah. and the next people in line all started taking photos a couple of people through and he stops the line walks over to me and goes oh can I have your phone grabs the phone swipes up gets the camera and then starts recording a message from chow to chow which JB will now insert <laughs> and with that <laughs> It'll be uh, probably probably just up above me here. Like, hey, Chael, how you doing, buddy? I'm standing here with your parents. Your mom's over here somewhere. We just made you a video. We screwed it up, though. I just want to tell you, I could not be prouder that we have the same name. I look forward to following your life and getting updates on you, pal. Take care, my friend. But, yeah, it's like, it, it was a great video. I, I showed a bunch of people, and they were like, wow, that's awesome. And you, you were saying... Um, but, uh, in previous chats that he was like genuine about it and stuff yeah yeah he was a bit taken back he was like oh really and um yeah but taken back he actually filmed the video twice the first one he um didn't hit record <laughs> amateur and um yeah got the video and it was just like nothing <laughs> no I said told him and yeah filmed it again wow that's awesome what a good uh, dude what else what else you know he's Real nice, honest. Yeah, it just seems genuine. Because sort of, a lot of people just don't get the whole character and yeah, that's real right. fight, real person. 
Well, he was like, um, you know, he was one of the first people in, well, that most people would know of in the UFC that sort of openly had a, a like, character, you know? He was openly a heel on air and stuff and, and things like that. Um, and he just played it so well that so many people just fully bought it. He could go and do WWE in a heartbeat, I reckon. His, his, yeah. Imagine how good his promos would be and stuff. On that, um, I think I mentioned it earlier today, he is back on the USADA testing list and has been tested two times already. So looks like he's coming back. Wow, that's awesome. So he's not testing the system, he's actually prepping to come back. So what, you think he's doing the four-month thing? Yeah, must be, yeah. Wow. And he's been, yeah, he's got, he's down two tests already in the last two weeks. Well, that's awesome. I wonder what he's been working on in his um, in his time off. You know, he's had a huge layoff. What, what's he been improving and shit? <laughs> he's basically clean, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's been who, who would he fight? Who would he fight? Who makes? I'd love them to come back and fight Anderson. Fun money. Yeah, I think Anderson's all about the fun money fights now. He's, yeah. I don't think he's lived after titles anymore. What about him versus Nick Diaz? That'd be a bit of a grapple fest. <laughs> Diaz is hate them wrestlers. Yeah, that's right. Just lie on people all day. Man, that that would be a great fight actually. That would be imagine the promo of that as well. Shale Shale can promote like like no one and still keep it clean and educated, you know? Or he would he would work Diaz up so much. <laughs> That'd yeah. be awesome. Yeah. No, that would be epic. That'd be great. Who else? Uh, what fight? else from Vegas? That's from Vegas. Oh, sorry. No, that's all good. What uh, was what was Vandal- like Vandalay if he wasn't at Rising? Oh yeah. That would be an uh, interesting fight as well. Because well, I'm surprised they didn't try and pick Shale up, or maybe maybe they did, and the UFC were like, well, you can go and fight for them, but you won't be fighting here again if you do. Because they don't exactly. seem to give a toss about anyone's bans or suspensions. Any of that. Yeah. Um, what else from um, from Vegas? We did a um, group of us. Well, it's probably fifteen Kiwis. We went, done a gym tour on the Friday. Started off um, stream couture's. Nice. Uh, checked out the gym there. Was it anyone was in a there? Few people. Um, Corey Beasting, uh, 20, 25 eight. 20, yeah, yep. yeah, he was, <laughs> yeah, slightly sparring. Oh, nice. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it Beasting. Um, <laughs> but, <yeah. laughs> he was there and um, Ray Sefo um, come out and had a chat to us for quite a while. Sort of, he's hoping maybe one more fight. Yep. One more fight. He said if he doesn't do it this year, then that'll be it. He sort of just wants. One more for hurrah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It'd also be good to get that money as well, no doubt. Although yep. he, probably, he probably makes a packet being the president of WSOF. And paying yeah. himself. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Just negotiate with himself. So how about 200, 200 to show, 200 to win? Yep, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah no, I, I think he's doing all right. Um insert this picture of his Hummer. <laughs> wow. Drove off, um, I will drove find off that. as we left in this massive Hummer. Shit, what a baller. <laughs> yeah, from there we went to Vandalay's. There, there was no one in there. We just walked in, checked out the Octagon mats and sort of some people bought some memorabilia. That's all I got. Cost oh, a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> nice, that's all good. And um, you guys went then, to Mayweather, I saw, I think? Yes, yes, then yeah. uh, from there we went to Mayweather's, that was actually under renovation, but um, we still managed to get in, check it out, it was, apparently there were Mayweather's gloves there, I don't doubt it because they were all crocodile pattern leather all over them. Oh jeez, yeah. It's, it's quite a nice, quite a nice gym, it's not big, it's, it's what, one... One boxing ring, some bags, and a little bit of mats, open mat space. That's it. Really? Nothing, 
special. It's just out in the middle of Chinatown. Wow. Wow. And then we from there, we went to the uh, legendary Johnny uh, Tacos. It's like an old school gym. Yeah. 1953 opened up. Damn. Sort of, it's back in the old mobster days. Yeah. And <laughs> this, <laughs> this place just smells like old boxing gloves. <laughs> yeah. It's like there's still holes in the walls and like Tyson, Ali, just you name it, they've trained there and then a lot of them sort of still go there. They don't want it to be upgraded, renovated or anything because it's just oh, the yeah. old, the feel of this old gym. It's sort of like the uh, Jim and Rocky, the original Rocky movie. Yeah. Just that old dump tape holding the bags together. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. That was the highlight, man. That was the highlight of Vegas. Something that you'll definitely do next time you go. Um, highlights, highlights. We did the, um, I always like Fremont Street, um, the old Vegas. Yeah. We like the old Gold Nugget casinos, all the wedding chapels are all sort of down there. I've got that massive, I don't know, what, 300 meter long digital screen that covers the street yeah this light shows this street performers just you name it, it it's just a different different feel from actual vegas itself on the strip yeah it's real nice it's just different I like it We're not and for someone, someone like me i want to come with you next time what was the what was the ballpark figure for for someone like me to start putting it away was it like three four uh, sort of. It depends on those flights. It depends on when you catch the flights. If you can catch yep. the deals, especially yep. now if American Airlines coming on has created a bit of um, competition between American Airlines and New Zealand. But three, four thousand, that'll get you accommodation, flights, bits and pieces. Um, but then you just got to weigh up how much you're going to drink. And, um, <laughs> Drink, gambling, stay away from gambling. <laughs> well, you get to drink free if you're gambling, yeah? Yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're crashing it. Free, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I've made the mistake of sitting down at a at a slot machine, chucking, chucking a $50 note, start spinning, order my drink, drink comes, money's gone. <laughs> $50 drink. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, you can you can drink cheap. There's little convenience stores there. You buy a big 16 ounce like Coronas, and you just wander the streets. There's no liquor laws like here. You, yeah, yeah. You buy a drink, you can walk anywhere with it. Pub, walk out for your plastic. As long as it's plastic, not glass, and walk out of the pub down the street, drink sipping away. And so the drink. whole thing is like one big pub and shit. Basically, yeah. as long as it's not glass, you, you're good to go. But you can get kicked out of um, Vegas. Is that right? I haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> UFC 300. <laughs> nah, you can yeah, definitely keep the cost down. I like nightclubs. You go drinking there, like good lord. I you would, not my scene. You have to pay the cover, lines are cover two, charges. three hours line, long. Yeah, cover charge. The drinks are horrendous. But um, actually, the drinks at 200, 13 dollars a beer, US. Jeez, that's like 20, 20 odd. Close to 20, yeah. Damn. Point, I guess it would be a point. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and they have these, they have cocktails at that arena. Whew. Yeah. Oh, that, it's nothing, there's nothing in New Zealand to compare it to. It's yeah. just what like about the Melbourne one we just made to. True. Is it compared to that one, Eddie Head? Uh, just flasher. It's just state of the art. It's just like there's the food. It's got good food. You got carveries, cocktail bars, everything there. Like there's corporate boxes, there's VIP entrances. It's just it's built wow. for Vegas, sort of. Because I've got a hockey team now. We got the NHL team starting there soon. <laughs> Nah, it's good, yeah, start saving. <laughs> yeah, well, so you'll be doing, um, you're going to carry on this tours? 
yeah, yeah. Uh, we're keen to take a group to Australia later in the year. I think they're talking Melbourne in November or nice. something. I'm hoping it's near the Melbourne Cup. Weekend of Melbourne, before Melbourne yeah, Cup. Yep. Just hit the double, do the double. And, um, but if, yeah. If someone back to Vegas wanted to. Or, um, um, <laughs> right, if someone wanted to uh, get at you about that, well, h- how would they hit you up? Uh, what are we at? Uh, Facebook slash Combat Sports NZ Tours. Nice. Yeah, we'll post the link. Yeah, we'll, we'll post the link in there, and this will yeah, go up on yeah. YouTube, and I'll, I'll put a little clickable link that people can click on. I can, I can vouch yeah. for this dude, man. We went to where? How many have we been to? A couple at least together in Aussie. This cunt keeps drinking and, and keeps going. It's good. Brisbane, yeah. Brisbane and Melbourne, I think we've been to. Nice. Brisbane and Melbourne, yeah. You know what you're doing. I, 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 I'd plan something for you. You know what I mean? It'd be, it'd be quite easy, I reckon. Awesome. Yeah. So you know, people out there get saving. If you want to hit, hit something big, you know, Lucas is saying it's about four grand sort of thing. If you want to go and have a good time that's you know that's not beyond anyone's reach if you got a decent job and stuff so yeah mint cool so let's move on from that um but we'll stay in <laughs> vegas uh what was your individual highlights of the ufc 200 event itself like your individual fight highlight yeah <sighs> or low light let's say highlight for or low light for me like the card started off amazing. What um the gym no, it was Gomi oh, uh, yeah. yep. getting KO'd. Jim Miller. Then we had Gags with the gay guards. Uh, uh, Sarsi yeah. versus yeah. Tiago Santos. Another TKO, then Joe Lozon, another TKO. TKO and then from then it sort of we were up here already and then it just plateaued. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it's a bad card. I think we we just went in with these expectations yeah, that's it. up here at twelve, and we got a card that was about a seven. And yeah. the two cards before were like an eight and nine. Yeah. So that, that Thursday night card was yeah. that was amazing. I think first five fights were submissions. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, it was it was awesome. It was um, good for me. I, I agree, you know, like the first three fights were over in the first round, they were just wicked, they were all free, you know, they just got everyone pumped, and then it was like four decisions in a row, I think, uh, on the yeah. on the prelim card, so, you know, you go from an epic f- a card that maybe a third of the people watch to just a snore fest that everyone's trying to get amped up to, and then, you know, you, it makes you expect even more from the main card, and Unfortunately, apart from like Kane's when it, it was all a bit, a bit average. Yeah. Funny story, I um, missed that. I was at the bar getting a drink. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. It was the most good, exciting good fight. Thing. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> eh? Yeah. Um, and then, you know, Aldo Edgar was a great fight. It just, um, you know, just, just went on. And, um, you know, then, the, you know, it's come out recently this week that Aldo saying I'm not sure whether he's joking or not about having a spy in the camp of Frankie Edgar so that's kind of made it a bit weird but did you need a spy to say that Frankie would take you down if you yeah, threw leg kick? That's right eh? and, and that Frankie's boxing is great and you know things like that it's like th- these are not things that a spy needs to tell you yeah, he said it was a joke he was um, getting back at Connor I believe who said the same uh, thing right. Before Aldo. Right. Well, uh, Connor just has better spies, or he was joking. Well, they really put Barboza on the spot because he's the Brazilian in Frankie's fucking camp, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, what, what's what you say? That's right, eh? Hey, you got to think about your repercussions. But yeah, Cormier um, <laughs> Silva, Cormier got a whole bunch of booze for um, nullifying Anderson Silva's ability to, to fight. You know, but that's you know that's the game. Like, what are you going to do? Like, oh, I'm just going to yeah. strike with Anderson Silver instead. I was, I was always. It added a little bit of interest. I was like, is he going to crack to this peer pressure? Is he try and strike. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's right. He would strike a little bit. He'd get clipped a couple of times. 
back to the ground. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What? He got hit, and then he went back to wrestling. Yeah, why, why would you, eh? Like, you know, Anderson Silva, if he connected with the right shot on you, anyone's going to sleep. So, um, yeah, um, you know, co-main was Lesnar Hunt. That was changed real quite late in the week, I think, from memory, um, to co-main instead of main. Um, what did you guys think of the fight? Oh, fuck. I was streaming it to my friend who couldn't watch it, and he, we were all hoping for first round, you know, and it didn't go that way, and, and I... You could sort of predict if it didn't go that way in the first few minutes, it might have yeah. went how it didn't go, and then that's how it went. And I was, um, I was very disappointed, obviously. Yeah. I, um, I think Lesnar fought a smart fight. He Agreed. kept distance. He kept distance. He didn't strike. Gave nothing for Mark to counter off of. Um, rushed. He did get in, get a hold of him, down to the ground. His arms are the size of a normal person's legs, so he was blocking all of Mark's shots with his flailing arms all the time as well. Like, <laughs> that's what it looks like, yeah. eh? Reminded me of Gunjack from Tekken, if anyone's ever played Tekken, Gunjack. But, yeah, man, it was, uh, like you say, it was he just executed the game plan perfectly. It was just three rounds of him neutralizing Mark Hunt in a similar way, but more dominant to uh, Cormier over Silver. Yes, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, that sucked the life out of the, the Kiwi section there, unfortunately. Uh, uh, maybe a lot uh, of people, because eh? I, I saw reports that basically, like on Twitter Live, as soon as that fight finished, people were saying that the stadium's starting to empty now, and that you, yeah, know, you still people, had the main left. event. Wow. Yeah, no, people definitely left you know, after that. That's Man. fucked up. That is, eh? It's like, you know, you pay so much money, you spend the time there, you know, there's a great fight to come, champions, <clears throat> etc. And and people are just like, oh, let's bounce. Yep. No, I, was actually, I was actually surprised the amount of casual fans that are sitting in very expensive seats. Yeah. Just yeah, like um, show ponies and stuff, people who are there just to, so they can go and say, oh, yeah, I was there. We were sitting right, yeah. you know, yeah. No, I'm, I'm here for 200 yeah yeah and they don't know shit about the game and yeah yeah I've, I've yeah. experienced it in local fight cards as well you know not yeah, that yeah. there are ex amazing seats etc but you know people who are there and they're just <laughs> just calling out just bullshit but yeah just start somewhere but put them in the body bag <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll chuck that just bleed meme over the top. <laughs> but yeah, um, the main fight, uh, fuck, I, I'm a big fan of Misha Tate as well, and yeah, that was um, that was getting to see her go the way she did, but it wasn't a surprise. Like you know, Amanda Nunes from the yep. moment she hit her the first time, it was like, man, she's gonna, she's wasting her. So yeah. Yeah, I was uh, very drunk. And I missed the last fight. <laughs> You're so, like these casual fans of the stadium. I think halfway through the Leicester Hunt fight, which is, <laughs> it's just how. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't comment on that. So. Well, it was, it what was, was the, quite... what was the feeling like back in New Zealand? Like, Fair like much. obviously a way I sort of didn't get a feel of the social media and yeah. that, but like the stuff I did see was quite negative afterwards. I think a lot of people were bummed. I, th I think Mark was carrying a few flags into that fight. You know, he was carrying like the New Zealand Australia flag, as well as um, the MMA versus WWE flag. You know, and and he, you know, he looked great in a few fights previous to that. He looked great in his camp and stuff. He looked in awesome shape, and then he just got wailed <coughs> on quite badly. And it just, uh, it was a huge disappointment. I know we were just sitting here like disappointed as shit. Yeah, well, my, my experience, like, it was just quiet, you know? It was, yeah. no one's going to say a bad thing about Mark. It's just, People and we sort of, almost, there was a chance that would happen, so it was just quiet. It was just a low, uh, yeah. that was about it. Just yeah. when shit doesn't go your way and you're like, well, well 
fucking do against, you know, like this fucking unstoppable fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, uh. It is what it is. And now, you know, it seems that Brock is potentially straight back in the mix of the of the contender <laughs> scene. <laughs> that facial. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, I don't know about that, eh? I just don't... Yeah, it, I, I didn't like the fight personally um, the moment it was announced for Mark because, you know, he just had everything to lose and little to gain. Like, you know, you beat Brock Lesnar and who have you beaten? You've beaten a guy who hasn't been fighting for years and stuff, etc. And if you lose to Brock Lesnar, then you're losing to a guy who hasn't been fighting for years. And, it, you know, who knows where that, that's going to leave Mark in the title picture right now. I still reckon yeah. he's right where he was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, is it going to be me. no contest, most likely? Oh, now? yeah, true but now, eh? Yeah. Wait, what's still, it's you know, still a yeah. loss. It's like Jack, um, Jack Ray lost to Romero. That went to a no contest, but it, everyone still just looked at it as a loss. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they, they can take away the L, but they can't take away the ass kicking. Mm. <laughs> But yeah, like put it uh, on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> T-shirts available in the shop next week. <laughs> Once we get that freaking button working. <laughs> but yeah, um, what's your, let's uh, let's bring it back sort of a bit closer to home. Um, <clears throat> one of the things we wanted to talk about was the New Zealand MMA scene, and um, you know where oh. where it's at at the moment. Got any thoughts? Yes. What did we have recently? We had Brace. Great card. Recently. Australian promotion. Yeah, Australian promotion. First time coming over here from memory, is that right? First time coming here, but they're coming back again shortly. Yes, back to Christchurch. In... I just remember they had a great commentary team yeah. on that one. Oh, fuck, Shout out was... to... Shout out to Isaac, who yeah. I met in uh, yeah. Vegas. That's awesome. Very entertaining. Yeah, and uh, like I just remember watching it on uh, Fight Pass and just thinking, you know, this is great. You know, it's it, it still had that New Zealand feel of like grassroots, small venue, people sitting at tables right there and stuff, and and the production value being quite low, but it was it was awesome. It was on Fight Pass and stuff, and it looked great. The fights were awesome as well. So hopefully that means that. We're maybe a step closer to getting a New Zealand promotion onto Fight Pass, which is, you know, that that would be great in itself. It would be great, but what what is the New Zealand promotion that you would put on there? I remember there used to be a lot of them. They did. Um, they used to be fighting over each other and shit, and yeah. then I can name, I can't even fucking remember what its name is now, but there's only Sharukin who who won't yeah. be having another one until November. That's right. And uh, the Hammerhead yeah. Jim puts on the other one down down south, which I can't go to. Yeah. Who else? There used to be like you know, Strike Force used to be. I'm not sure if they they are, but you know, they used to be a player back in the day. They they had their Canter- Canterbury arm as well as the West Auckland team. You know, it was like great. But um, you know and. <laughs> It was, you know, maybe about a year ago that uh, Oliver MMA became an affiliate of uh, Top Team USA. Oh, what was it? Yeah, American Top yeah. Team. Yeah. And then, um, you know, there's, you know, there's been no sort of real growth, etc. Out of them, like I, I would consider Shuriken maybe the biggest at the moment in New Zealand in terms of production value when you're at one of their events um you know they got a whole bunch of belts etc there's like a unanimous belt which goes around between a few of the promotions but uh if i had to pick one at the moment it would probably be shuriken to be on um on fight pass but yeah i don't know you know back to the to your point i don't know if any of them are ready to be on fight pass and and be be that um flagship for new zealand mma yeah, um, back on back to Brace. Um, Brace Forty Three will be at in Christchurch, October first. We could um, potentially look at a road trip. Tickets aren't on sale yet. Um, 
VIP tables are available from uh, Matt Kane. Um, <coughs> up on um, Facebook. We'll probably post, post the link below. Nice. Yep. I'll check that one up. Because, you know, yeah, October, but, that's yeah. a bit of time. Back to, back to that. Brace. I mean, just got on. Did they just get on fucking Fight Pass? I think this is their, their second, or th well? second or third um, yeah. one on Fight Pass. See, so, yeah, and they, they Aussie promotions, obviously there's more population and shit, but That's right. there's a few that could have gone on Fight Pass, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. They had a choice of yeah. fucking promotion. And Nitro, yeah. AFC, uh, like, Hex. yeah, yeah, there's a few, yeah. and they got to choose the best one, which was obviously Brace, I'm not... I'm just saying that because no, no, they're, they're the right. ones that got it. Yeah. But um, we're, we're not there yet at yeah, all. Yeah, that's you know our population is something you know you name a sport, a game, anything you want really. Our population is such a hindering factor to us, especially when Australia have got such a big pool of talent and depth of talent as well. But um, you know we we our talent you know New Zealand has always punched above its weight. But um, it seems like now everyone's so focused on getting to the UFC. No one wants to be a star in New Zealand. Mm. They just want to be a star in the UFC or internationally, you yeah. know. We have trouble, you know, we have trouble when we post. We have trouble getting people to give a shit yeah. about anything but the UFC. Yeah. Where, where the Aussie MMA scene is just fucking it's way bigger, yeah, mate. Yeah. Grassroots to, yeah. to the top. That's right, yeah. Everyone, they sell out, they have shows all the time. Yeah. Well, you know... Thanks for the, yep. the grassroots, there's another thing in Vegas. Um, the amateur worlds, the IMMAF worlds were on. Yep. We actually took one of the biggest teams over. We had 13 fighters, coaches, yep. refs, um, judges, I think... The, I went there to one of the earlier days on the second day I was there and I saw, who did I see? Jamie Cookson, Braden, Braden? Yeah, he ended up winning the middleweight section anyway. Sorry, I can't remember, think of his name at the moment. The talent, these these guys are amateur. The talent in that amateur competition, oh, I was yeah. impressed. And the passion as well, you know, those guys got everything to fight for. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'd like to watch those fellas fight, you know. Where, yeah. I want, I just want to watch them fight. Well, like, they, um, where is... I think uh, Shuriken last year and this year did the qualifiers for, for the Vegas trip uh, in their Road to Vegas uh, event. It's an annual <clears> event that they do, so... Yeah, it's definitely that, that's another sort of argument towards Shuriken being being one of the ones that potentially would step in if anyone could. But um, yeah, that's it's you know it is becoming more rare now to go and find a grassroots show than previously because the talent, as we've talked about previously, um, seems to have to go find its um, bread and butter elsewhere in the New Zealand. I've been away for a bit too, so I am just talking about a few years ago. Used to be untold shows. Yeah, yep. Like every, you know, every weekend it's like, oh, you know, people planning events like, oh, we can't have it this weekend because this show's on. We can't have it this weekend, and you know, now it doesn't it doesn't seem to be as saturated with um with with events. Yeah. Maybe where they could all fucking join forces and make, you know. I guess that's, somehow we'll that's the us. next thing, right? When you left, like, when you left, were Industry of Combat NZ still around? ICNZ. They're just selling their cage when I left. Sure. Yep. I remember that. I remember that time. All those boys seem to be in Thailand. Fucking Hooker, Kai, Luke Jameo. Yeah. Um, it's the place to be, mate. Well, we were looking at it the other day, right? You can train there for five hundred bucks a week, I think, ish. Yeah. Accommodation, food, and, and and like three training sessions a day, and they probably they probably get some a better deal than that. Yeah, you know? they would get a better rate than that. That's for yeah, that's sure. the tourist for rate. Tourists. Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you're, if you're they, like they, industry. They're for months on end. Yeah. 
No, that's right. You know, I think Lucas mentioned it before we came on here, you know, like, the, uh, and to your point, those guys can live at a local rate, you know, dollars a day and s- sometimes, and then still get world-class training. Yeah, for sure. Probably, they'd probably do some coaching if they want. Um, yeah, pay, pay they, a bit they, of bills. They, they, that's a springboard, right, to, like, Asia, like, one FC, legend yeah. FC. Yeah. Contact and shit. Yeah. Where so you can't blame them for for leaving here, nah. but it was nice when they were here. Fuck. It was awesome. It was awesome. Like, uh, yeah, it was great having all of that talent here. You know, Ev Ting, who's who's uh, ripping it up in one FC. Shout out to Ev. And um, shout out to Ev. Yeah, the man. Um, you know, Dan Hooker, etc. You know, when when New Zealand scene was on and cooking like three years ago, four years ago, it was it was great. It was real great. So, speaking of the New Zealand scene or, or people with a loose affiliation to New Zealand, Robert Whitaker, great fighter, UFC fighter, um, born in New Zealand, I think, and uh, represents New Zealand down Australia, represents it on his chest, um, as well as in his words and his actions. So, yeah, like, um, why do people like why is he not a bigger deal than than he is like you know the guy's incredibly marketable talented young he's like got all the appeal but he doesn't seem to be getting any of the push where's the respect that's right yeah put some respect on his name that's right put some respect on his name shit oh he's just quiet I think yeah, yeah, and he's know, like, re- recently it, married and stuff, I think, earlier this year or maybe last year, so, you know, potentially he's more into the private life at the moment. Yeah, he's a nice dude, karate, karate background, I think, you know, all that respect, but, I mean, he just took out Uriah Hall and Rafael Natal. Yeah, yep. You know, and... Uh, no one's talking about he's number fucking six ranked middleweight. I feel like he's a quiet achiever, but I've been following his career the whole time, you know, and it, it's, it still feels like it's crept up on me. Yeah, Maybe I, I think because you only hear from him fight time. That's right. He he's not in the news in between. Yeah, he's not out there, like, on Twitter calling people he, out. He's not out there, you know, like, posting nudes. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, he yeah, like like you say, he is not that guy who's out there grabbing attention, um, and you know, getting the followers, and and you know, he's doing the necessary marketing only, and um, I guess that's, it, you know, he's doing great in the fight game. It might be part of a secret, you know, he's he's only doing what he has to do, so that's why he's so good at what he does. Yeah, potentially he could uh, headline the next Australian card, right? Yeah, I mean, if yeah. he got someone like Vitor or Gay Guard, yep. that could be a headline. Yeah, well, who, you know, potentially what would a good fight for him be? Well, there was talk of the Bisbing fight before Bisbing went and got himself a title. <laughs> Inconsiderate. <laughs> okay. Was he supposed to get Anderson as well once upon a time? Uh, I think I haven't heard that one. Man, that, yeah, that'd be interesting. Buyer. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see him fight Anderson. Yeah, Leoto's on. Is he on I, two years? I think so. Anderson doesn't want that fight. Anderson won't take that fight. That, nah. that, There's no pay per view dollars on that fight for him. I don't even know if Vitor will take that. Maybe. I reckon Vito no, those, would get like, smoked pretty early. Big money fights now. Yeah. Those guys are on their vets min. That's what they want, that vets minimum. What about Gay Guard then? I'd love Gay to Gay see that fight. I, I could fully see Gay Guard versus Whitaker. That would be a huge fight. I'll take you through the rankings here. We've got uh, champion Michael Bisping. We've got number one, Luke Rockhold. Two, Chris Weidman. Number three, Jacare Souza. Vitor Balfour, Anderson Silva. Number six is Robert Whitaker. Seven, Gagard Musasi. Eight, Machida. Nine, Uriah Hall. Ten, Derek Brunson. So, Gagard has to be. Derek Brunson. It's got to be Gagard. 
Gagar. That would be he a took great no fight. Damage. But there's he no marketing. Fight. There's no marketing in that fight either. No, none of them are going to talk. Yeah, neither of those guys will market. You know, like there'll be some some <clears throat> mumbling on the podium at the press conference and stuff and a face off. But those guys are not going to sell the fight. Like for a main event, it, it's something the UFC would have to do a lot of production around themselves. See, yeah, and how do you, what what do you do with a fight like that? He, he deserves more, but he's just a good guy. Yeah. That's it, you know. They, it's it's tough, like, cause you know they can they could set the table for him, but you know potentially he he just isn't gonna isn't gonna do what they need him to to get the money back. No, no. Those fighters, they eventually get there. It just takes them a few more fights. Is he um, the, uh, the the noisy fighters? You lived in Aussie for a long time. Was he? He's got a following over there. <sighs> I wouldn't say, well, it, cuts that know, we'll already know him, right? But if, if you're asking about casuals, no, nah, they don't know who he is, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, all, all the bros and, and all the dudes that know what they're talking about know who he is, and we all follow him because yeah, yeah. he's fucking one of us. But, no, he's not a household name, not, yeah. not an Aussie either. Wow. Well. So yeah, I guess I guess we kind of answered that discussion. You know, he, um, you know, he's not a household name potentially because he he isn't putting himself out there to be a household name. Power to him though. Great fighter. I'm a huge fan of his. Fuck yeah, no, he's mean, and uh, I just want I just want the best for him. You know, yeah. and if that means he puts out a few stupid tweets Dude. and gets him paid, it's you like why not? Yeah. Hey, uh, Robert Whitaker, if you're out there, we'll run your social media for cheap ass, bro. <laughs> we'll call out those things. Yeah, bro, we will Talk call out to... everyone for you. You'll have so many fights bro, coming out your ears. Give this big some shit, man. He'll <laughs> take the bait, bro. Yeah. What's, uh, what's his, he's, um, it's the Hendo rematch for Bisping next, is it? Yeah, in Manchester in October. Man, that's going to be a money fight like for that Bisping. Fight. That's it a is, fight is, night or fight. pay-per-view? Oh, I think it'll have to be a might be a pay per view, surely, I think. Man, that's gonna be a money fight. It's, if he knocks out Hendo, man, that's like a fairy tale. I would love to see him knock out Hendo. Not anything against Hendo, just, just for Bisping's benefit. I'd love to see him even that score and at least defend the title. Shit, bro, you you gone you gone you gone, you gone dark on everyone. Holy there, bro. Yeah, I don't know why it's gone so dark. Oh <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, it's a fairy tale either way. It's a great fight, man. I wanted that fight. Yeah, fight well, Chris White if Hendo wins, then Cooper. you're absolutely right. If Hendo wins, it's a fairy tale too, shit. Yeah, man, either way, it's fairy tale. It's great. They both deserve it too. Yeah. That's what he would have said to Dana. Oh, fucking, we deserve this shit. And he would have, yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah. Dana would be like, that's fucking right, Michael Bisping. You fucking deserve that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Pendo wins. Does he drop the mic and retire? Or imagine that He'll, he keeps going. Wait, when you win a yeah. when you win a belt, you get, they give you the belt you win, or yeah, well you keep one. I think, yeah, because you keep one, know, eh, and then uh, yeah, you probably don't keep everyone after every fight. You but you probably keep the one they first drape around your waist. But yeah, like... I mean, I, I've heard of a fighter keep like having one and then giving one to a school and. Maybe you do get them. Fuck, that's cool. It's like fucking giving you money, bro. It's like fucking, here's some yeah. gold. Here's a big check, but you wrap yeah. it around your yeah. waist. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck was that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweet. Yeah. So uh, thanks for listening, everybody. This has been uh, Fight Bros, Combat Sports NZ Radio with myself, JB. Stop showing off, Lucas, motherfucker. <laughs> we got Lucas, who's walking through yeah. his mansion. And uh, we got big old Anaru up here with his UFC prospect hat. <laughs> Put some respect on it. Put some respect on his name. Shout out to everyone. Check us a message if you want to see anything on the podcast. If you got any questions, etc. Anyone you want to see on here, we're going to get some guests on here in the coming yeah. weeks. And um, yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah.